All right, good morning, everybody. All right, we will call this meeting to order at 7.32. Amanda? Mr. Gertz? Here. Mr. Kyle Miller? Here. Mr. Steve Miller? Here. Mr. Mullet? Here. Mrs. Klink? Here. Um, as always, we operate under a consent agenda. Is it guess? Any guests today? Uh, I think we do have uh two guests with us Lori pringle is going to do a presentation and then we also have a new teacher um here at the meeting as well okay um so I recommend the board approve the minutes of the regular meeting of may 18. make that motion second amanda mr gertz yes mr steve miller yes mr kyle miller yes mr mullet yes and mrs clink yes um, I also recommend the board approve the agenda for June 15th, 2021, along with the addendum to the agenda. Make that motion. Second. Yeah. Mr. Steve Miller. Yes. Mr. Mullet. Yes. Mr. Gertz. Yes. Mr. Kyle Miller. Yes. Mrs. Clink. Yes. All right, for our superintendent's report here this morning, uh, first just want to again <laughs> highlight and recognize uh, two staff members who we um, recognized at our end of the year staff recognition program. First, our teacher of the year this year is Highland Intervention Specialist Jan Isaac. And our uh, classified staff member of the year is Monica Yoder, Secretary at Winesburg. And just uh, two great individuals, uh, more than uh, deserving um, to be recognized. <clears throat> Just want to thank them. Uh, next, we're uh, going to turn it over to Lori Pringle, our district um, library coordinator, who's going to do her uh, annual report. So, Lori, if you want to take control of the screen, it's all yours. There it is, okay, uh, I will do that. Okay, well, once again, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to join you today. I'm just gonna share some reflections um, from across the district. Um, and just kind of give you a little capture of the year. Um, definitely a unique one in our libraries as well as classrooms. Um, this first slide um, is just really a reflection of some of the, the key captured moments throughout the school year. Um, and you do have a copy of this so you can read in detail. So I won't be reading every detail out to you. Um, just really, uh, although it was a challenging year and we had a lot of small groups in the library, we did find that that was really rewarding too because the library staff had time to give those students that individualized attention to help select their materials. So often when you have 25 little children running around in the library, it's hard to give that one-on-one -on -one where this year we had a lot of small groups attending to just reduce that. So. Um, exposure and, and allow for that social distancing. Um, instruction continued this year. We did our internet safety. Um, we did a lot of fun activities like breakout rooms and um, challenges and right to read week and you know even genre studies. So that was fun to continue the learning. Um, students were happy to get back to more of a traditional library feel here at the end of the year. Um, so that was nice to kind of bring the kids back into the library for story times. Uh, a little bit more detail into that um, COVID look of our libraries. We did purchase totes and we quarantined all the materials for the recommended 72 hours based on the HIO um, research studies that Battelle had done. So um, that really caused us to limit some of the circulation because with a, a, you know our collection sitting in a tub for essentially a week, um, we did have to reduce the number of, of books some of the children received so that we could manage that and still have plenty on the shelves for them to select from. Um, we were also careful to disinfect between classes and we did go to the classrooms um, for read alouds and whatnot to ensure that the students had space to spread out. But that, you know, as the year progressed and, and things got better, we um, didn't have to 
to do the quarantine here this spring and we were able to bring the children back into the libraries, which was a lot of fun. Um, one another advantage we found, um, we really encourage students to place holds online using our online catalog. And then the schools that children didn't have easy access or aren't allowed to use computers, they place paper holds. So they would jot down what they wanted. And then the librarian would pull those books and check those out and get those delivered to the students. And that was a neat, um, really move forward with holds that we hadn't done in the past, um, which was really kind of a nice thing. And I think that will continue now that the students are more empowered and, and familiar with that holds process. We did receive an LSTA grant, which was provided by the Museum of Library Services, and that is awarded through the State Library of Ohio. Um, that enabled us to get 50, 153 new books. They are all written or illustrated by Ohio um, library, Ohio authors or Ohio illustrators. And the focus of that grant was to key in on the books that were um, Ohio on a winners. And we carefully selected titles we thought our children would enjoy. And the target audience for that is gonna be our fourth graders. So starting this fall, we'll do some in-depth studies with those books. We'll encourage those fourth graders to read those, select kind of an author or an illustrator of focus, and they'll do some research skills around that um, that person and then share that out with their peers. So I think it'll be a neat way to really get to know some of our Ohio authors and Ohio illustrators uh, and yet providing great um, primarily picture books that are really gonna be available to all students because they'll be part of our library collection. So we're really excited to implement that program. The students just got to explore the books this spring and, and check those out. And we did a few little, little studies um, in a couple of the buildings, but they came in, the grant was a spring award. So didn't have much time to actually get to dive into those books, but looking forward to that for next fall. Um, we, as we've done for many years, we applied for the Second and Seven Foundation. They provide a free book for every second grader and that is for you know students in need and in, in rural communities and whatnot. And it's neat because that's an Ohio based. It was started by um, Ohio State University um, football players is initially, and it's really a grown program. And the real focus of that is they want to foster literacy and they want that sports connection. So Chris does a great job of aligning baseball players and they go out and our superstars and, <laughs> and our high school boys go out and read these books and then each second grader gets to have a copy of the book that the boys shared and they just the students actually love that they they are so excited to get it and they continue to produce new books so we try to rotate through the stories that are most um suiting for our populations and this year's book was a visit with victoria and so she was a librarian and the student just really gets to connect and realize that that librarian is a person who cares and wants to listen and wants to connect them to to life and to books. So that was a fun highlight this spring. This uh, bar graph kind of captures the sizes of our collections. Obviously, they align to the sizes of the buildings. You know, Berlin and Chestnut Ridge are our largest student populations, so they have um, more books. Highland is a larger building as well, but our Highland students really rely on nonfiction online. They like to use the databases for their research, so the book collection is not as large because of the need. It's really more um, research-based nonfiction and even nonfiction that reads like fiction. And then our fiction stories are still popular at Highland. So the blue bar at the bottom, you can see the majority of our collections are um, fiction and then nonfiction and then easy books and biographies. And this is kind of that same information, but captured as a district as a whole. So you can see that, you know, our book collections are still very strong in, in those reading and research resources. We do have a small ebook collection across the district, however, with um, continued cuts. We have not been able to order new, but those books that we bought years ago are still there. So that's exciting that the students can continue to use those um, ebooks. A lot of those elementary ebooks are nonfiction that teachers can pull up the whole classroom and go to a specific topic and, and use that as an alternative to um, sharing a physical book. So, and then there is some fiction in there as well for just the casual readers to give them something different to read. 
Um, circulation was down, as I mentioned earlier, um, due to the COVID and the quarantining of resources, we did reduce the number of books each child could get, but yet we still circled an average of 50 books per student, which is great. Um, still have a lot of great resources about the same level. We continue to weed out those old tattered torn titles as we are able to replace new ones. Um, we did continue with the public library collaboration in 2018. You'll remember we um, received a grant, a, another LSTA grant, and that purchased the book drop outside of Highland, as well as the training and the connection provided that opportunity to collaborate. So the public library actually delivers books to Highland. We check those in and then we that notifies the patron so they can come to Highland and check that book out. Um, they are available to all of our Highland students as well as teachers and staff across the district. And we do see a lot of staff usage. Elementary teachers get collections for their classrooms. Even teachers across the district even just get that pleasure read book as well or that nonfiction book they would like to read. And if it's a staff member, we have an extra little form we fill out and then we're able to check that book out and use our district um, mailing. So it goes out through school mail to get that delivered. And then that patron's of it, responsible for returning that book. Um, this is a glimpse into info. How I mentioned Highland uses a lot of databases and that is our main database source is info. How there are 65 different resources that students can tap into there. Um, I'm excited this year is um, the first year that I will be on the info Ohio users group and that council is actually meeting um, today. So I will be on that committee kind of representing the Tri-County area. The Laudenville librarian has done that the last couple years and her term's up. So I um, volunteered to take that term. So I'm looking forward to that opportunity. Um, we are, as you can see, our info how usage sessions are up 52%. Our page views are up 93%. And I really think that has um, reflection of our times with more students online um, and, and really diving into using those online resources, not knowing if we were going to go hybrid. Um, and so I think that that attributes to that. And I also think I, you know, I continue to educate our staff across the district and we try to, you know, feed out those resources that best fit the curriculum. And so that's exciting to see those usage stats continuing to grow. And then the rest of the report is just a reflection. Each um, library staff member wrote up, kind of just giving you a glimpse into their year. So I will allow you to read those independently. Um, once again, I just want to thank you for allowing me to join you. Are there any thoughts or questions? Thank you, Lori, for your report. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, thank you on behalf of the students and the, the staff and, and, you know, my library staff, as well as the teaching staff, we greatly appreciate that we can still have robust libraries and students can come to the library. Um, and our, our students are clearly readers. They love their books. Tiffany, per student average is higher than I would have expected it. Mm -hmm. You know what that is in a normal year, Lori? What's that? Do you know what the normal app around the normal averages per year? Um, yeah, t traditionally in the elementaries, it's closer to 70 per student, 75. It really de depends on the building. Some buildings have more, more time to do that shelving and check in and others don't. So it kind of balances to the, the staff member, but it, you know, it's anywhere from 70 to 90, but the, the overall district circ average, I would say would be 75. Well, thank you, Lori. Appreciate what you do for our libraries. Lori is always looking for ways to seek additional grant dollars and those types of things to support our, our libraries and our students. And you know, I think I don't have exact data on this, but I would have to think our libraries um, maintain a higher uh, print um, environment than, than the trend of what many other uh, public school district libraries are. So um, our kids love to read. So. Thanks Hap, for supporting them, Lori. Yep. All right, we'll move into our building and supervisor reports and I'll just call you out as I see on the screen here. And uh, Mr. Lunaborg, you're up first. All right, well, it's good to see everybody today. A nice day in June. Um, just a few items here going on in our buildings. Uh, our eighth grade graduations at both Chestnut Ridge and Mount Hope went really well. 
both were well attended. And this year with some of the mandates and restrictions, we held those uh, graduations off campus and had a lot of support from our parents. And uh, we were able to do some different things and, and had some nice experiences there with those graduations. I do want to thank Mr. Gertz and Mr. Kyle Miller. They were able to attend uh, those graduations and it's just really nice to have some board representation at those that our parents can uh, meet with those board members and uh, talk about our school district. So very excited that those went off very well. Um, due to not being able to do the Washington DC trip this year, uh, Mr. Traps and I got together and we uh, took our eighth grade students to Mohican Adventures for their eighth grade trip this year. And they all had a great time. Took a canoe trip down the river, putt-putt, uh, go-karts. The parents that came just had a really good time, good lunch. And it was just kind of like a nice culminating activity for our eighth grade students as they finished up at the East Holmes. And those little activities are important for our families. They, they were very appreciative and thankful that we did something for them, um, even though we couldn't go to Washington, D.C. Um, right now, Mount Hope, uh, we're presently having our old restrooms renovated, and it's kind of a mess up there right now, but it's exciting to see those things uh, progressing. Um, they are in dire need of an upgrade, and uh, hopefully that will be done here in the next few weeks. Um, I just want to shout out to some of our Chestnut Ridge families. They put together uh, a picnic for Chestnut Ridge School the day after school was out at Owens Field, and it was just as well attended as if we had it at our own school. And hopefully we'll be able to bring those events back to our buildings next year. But it just shows the importance of bringing our school community and our family together and playing some softball games, seeing people, had a full potluck lunch and everything. It was a really nice event. And our teachers were able to go up there for lunchtime for a little while. And uh, they had a good time. So, and Mr. Miller, our eighth grade teacher, took the eighth grade rockets up and they shot rockets off for all the families. So they really enjoyed seeing those things too. So... And just a nice thing this summer, custodial staff has hit the ground running and the buildings are getting uh, cleaned out really good and we'll be ready for next school year. So, hey, everybody have a great summer and thanks. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Sprang. All right, good, good morning, everybody. Um, before I kind of start into my uh, building report, I just want to introduce a couple people. Um, first on the call there is Reese Bonifant. Reese is on the board agenda today to be hired as a general teacher here at Highland. Um, we're super excited about having Reese coming on board to help uh, with our online program as well as a uh, leader in me in the building and um, just are excited to, to see what he can bring to our students and staff. So I wanted to introduce Reese. Then also here in the room I've got um, our uh, new athletic director Seeger Bonifant. Um, Seeger is going to share a little bit and an update on his progress as well as some success we had here at the end of the year. Um, with athletics. Um, going through just some things that have been happening here at Highland, um, last week we had medical, middle school musical camp that featured two shows at the end of the week. Um, the musical was the Big Bad Musical and uh, it was led by Ellie Zumba with the support of Mrs. Clay and Mr. Looney. So it was just great to have um, the middle school students in here working on the play. Um, and I think uh, the thing that I enjoyed the most was seeing the high school students leading it, directing it, giving them feedback, and then we're a big part of those productions on Friday. Um, student Anthony Miller um, has already got our Chromebooks ready. Uh, if you can see him in the background there, he has been working hard, and uh, we actually are ready for, for every student next year to get their Chromebook. We just would have to deliver them to the rooms. Um, so appreciate his work he's done with technology. The uh, mural was also completed by Mrs. Clay's speech students. Uh, there's now a new mural between the choir room and the band room that kind of features uh, music and the arts, as well as some inspirational quotes. So it was, it was great to have kids in the building after the school year to get that wrapped up. Graduation was a success. Um, really appreciate uh, John Slayball in the East Holmes Fire Department, as well as Terry Byland for helping coordinate the parade. Thought we had a fantastic day for graduation and it was a great way to, to kind of wrap up the year and recognize our students. Couple more things. Um, at the end of the year, our, our adult and student lighthouse team met to plan some activities for next year. So we're looking forward to that. Um, and then finally, uh, kind of an announcement to everybody. Next year, Highland, um, Highland only, high school and middle school will be transitioning to Final Forms. Um, Final Forms is an online platform where parents can fill out all paperwork online and submit it. Um, we are very excited about that. We hope it streamlines the process for everyone. Um, 
There will be an email coming in July to every parent that has an email on file with the district. Um, so please be looking for that email. Don't delete that email. If you do delete that email, not a big deal, but just let us know. Um, we're hoping that that makes everything a lot, a lot easier. Um, so those are a couple things academics uh, related. I'm going to let Seeger share a little bit about athletics. Yeah, what's up, guys? Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to lead the coaches here. I'm super excited about it. Um, just what I've been doing, you know, the past month, I've, I've met with almost all my coaches. Um, thought it went really well, um, getting some things going. I also want to say that Art's been helping me out with the transition a lot. It's been going pretty smooth. I still a lot to learn, but he's been super helpful. Um, so I want to thank him for that. Um, I just want to recognize the baseball team, Coach Degas, for making the regional final. That's very impressive. Uh, we also had a relay team to make it to the regional final in, in Maslin. Um, and also uh, individually recognize Kelsey Swihart uh, for making it to the state tournament and shot put. Um, yep, so thanks again, guys, for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. And I think as parents start to learn more about final forms, everybody, I know one parent in the room uh, heard a sigh of relief of not having to fill out paperwork already. So um, look forward to that transition. Uh, Mr. Travis. Good morning, everybody. A um, couple of things that were repeats from Mr. Lunaborg, but uh, the WISE graduation was held at the Oasis Center this year in Charm. We had our regular graduation ceremony and picnic. It went really well and it was nice having a space where we didn't have to worry about rain. So I went ahead and we're booked for next year at the end of the year to have it at the Oasis Center again. So uh, families liked the central location and, and we had a backup plan in case of weather. So we're going to have it there again next year. Um, same, here, the Mohican trip uh, Friday a week ago, what did go well, as Mr. Lunaborg said, and it was nice to have all three eighth grade classes together at Mohican. So that was something that we hadn't done in the past. I wanted to welcome uh, Anna Millers, the only new staff member yet that's not been at uh, um, the Valley so far. She's been in some of our end of the year meetings and she's kind of hitting the ground running. So that's been really nice to have um, Anna. She's been in a classroom looking around and getting things organized for next year already. So uh, welcome to have her still looking for a special ed and title teacher for Flat Ridge. Summer cleaning here at uh, both buildings is starting and it's been really quiet in the building except for that going on. So they are um, hitting the ground like JT said and, and getting ready for next year already. So looking forward to having a good summer and um, getting classrooms ready. Uh, last thing for me is a leader and me planning meeting later this morning with Susanna Ho Hobreths, our leader and me coach. So getting things ready um, and a plan for next year in place um get this in june so thank you have a great summer thanks mr travis uh mr haven good morning uh, i have three things to share from both the w's uh number one is eric alluded to it earlier about our end of year celebration that's more of a reflection of the whole district um it was uh, probably one of the highlights if not the highlight of the year uh, to be able to recognize uh, the accomplishments of like Jan Isaac and Monica Yoder than others. Um, what a great way to end the year. So thank you again for allowing us to, to do that. And I know I always hear positive feedback from the teachers. It's just always a great way to finish up the year. Number two, uh, we finished the year, both buildings with our, our clap out. If uh, you've never been to one of our clap outs, basically it's our sixth graders uh, we play music. We announce one kid at a time. They walk through the hallways while the entire student population is in a hallway. We call it a clap out, but it's more of a hug out, high five out. And uh, yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time to way to say goodbye to our sixth graders. And then thirdly, on May 28th, our lighthouse team uh, from both buildings met at my house. And uh, we uh, reflected back on our, our COVID year and dreamed about things that we would like to see in our buildings. And then started putting action plans and assigning those dreams to uh, people. So we're moving forward, uh, continuing just to tap into the great resource that we've been blessed with in our buildings. That's all I have. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Mr. Haven. Uh, Mr. Blocklinger. Good morning, everyone. Uh, like a lot of the other guys were saying, 
summer projects are underway and going well. Jason and Jim and Levi uh, working hard in the building upstairs. Uh, I am excited. I don't want to steal anything from John, but summer school is happening here. And in about 30 minutes, the building will be full with kids again. So it's always nice summer school to have the kids in the building. Um, at, the end of la at the end of the year, we did also have our sixth grade uh, celebration, um, uh, kind of like what Daryl's talking about and uh, really celebrate the sixth grade students that we uh, passed on to Chestnut Ridge Highland and wherever else they may go. A great, great group of kids. Uh, we'll really miss them. Um, had some resignations and we've been working hard to fill those resignations. And I think, uh, I think we finally will have that completed so that we can start things for next school year as well. And then again, I want to thank everyone um, just for a great school year. It was tough, but it, it was a great school year and we're glad we could have had it. So thanks again. Have a great day. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Wilson. Good morning. Just a couple things here. Uh, first of all, the state test results are due back to the district here over the next several weeks. Uh, so we'll be analyzing those uh, just to help make plans for next year. Uh, we are nearing completion uh, on the one needs assessment and also the CCIP planning portion, uh, which you'll recall triggers uh, federal funding for us. Um, yesterday afternoon, the initial drop of Title I uh, was actually put into the account. Uh, it looks to be in line with what we have encountered in years past. Um, as Darren mentioned, summer school, I think it's going very well. The kids seem to be enjoying it, and uh, the teachers are doing a great job of engaging them. So I, I want to thank them for all their work on that. Uh, here in the uh, testing and curriculum office, uh, Amy Rao has started making the transition. Uh, she's working with April here uh, over the course of this week uh, just to keep those items progressing. And then lastly, um, continuing to work through the PD platform uh, for next school year. Thanks. All right, thanks everybody. And then here uh, in person with us, uh, Ms. Calzo. Um, so at the end of the year, we I was not here in May in person. Um, we had CPI training that day and we had 12 staff members complete that crisis prevention um, training and did a great job that day. And then I just want to say a thank you to all the special education staff, including Jenny and Charity. Um, all year we worked towards yet another transition. Last year we transitioned with TCCSA from Progress Book Special Services to an updated version of Special Services. And this year we are transitioning to a product called Same Goal for all of our documentation. And that is not a small project for our district by any means. We have to make sure all documentation is completed, wrapped up, finished by a certain date and have that all um, under wraps so that the same role staff can go in and pull those documents through to the new system. So staff had that all wrapped up by May 24th and I really appreciate their help with all that. Um, so we look forward to using this new product when school starts. And then um, just looking forward to the coming year and anticipating the return to some more normal events possibly like community field trips, activities for the kids, opportunities for classes to get together um, and just some of those little trips they would make to maybe the grocery store to utilize some social skills and money skills to um, you know, follow up on lessons they've had in class. So just hoping we can get all those back in place. So. Thank you. And then to round it out, um, Amanda just has a little report from the Teachers Association on an event that they held right near the end of the school year um, at Highland. All right, so this is from the East Holmes Teachers Association President Megan Mullet, um, and it's their Read Under the Lights report. And she just asked that I read this to give you an update. East Holmes Teachers Association, with the help from teachers and staff across the district, as well as retired teachers, hosted a Read Under the Lights event at Highland Baseball Field on May 15th. Families with students in preschool to second grade were invited to attend. 38 families attended, with a total of 85 children from five of our elementary schools and Bright Beginnings Preschool. Children were given snack and goodie bags from money East Holmes Teachers Association have received from a grant 
from their Canton office. Books donated by East Home staff were given out to families as well. The public library brought their bookmobile and gave out books and buttons to attendees. Guest readers for the evening were Mr. Eric Yoon and Holmes County Public Librarian, Michelle Skolmich. The Teachers Association has already received grant approval for next year and hope to make this a yearly event for our district. Thank you, and thanks to the association. It was a uh, weather was beautiful, and it, um, for our first time, I think it was pretty well attended. So appreciate them uh, reaching out to do that. Just last on the report, there just two things. Uh, just our uh, quarterly requirement with the Business Advisory Council. You'll see the report there, and then number five, uh, just uh, the first reading on language update. Um, those two uh, policies on um, uh, severance payment. So that's just our first reading there, and the second reading will happen in July. That's it for the superintendent's report. Really? Right. A lot of items under the treasurer's report today. Um, items one through seven, I want to draw your attention to items three through seven. Um, three, four, five, and six are all a matter of wrapping up the fiscal year and starting next fiscal year. Um, number three is just asking for approval for any advances or transfers from the general fund. And that's to make sure that any of our other funds are in the positive should cash flow be an issue. Um, if that does need to happen, which right now it actually doesn't look like it's going to be, um, especially with food service. I know that's <coughs> one we're always paying attention to. Um, but as of yesterday, we're gonna be okay unless some last minute invoices come in. Um, if that were to happen, I will give you an update at that July meeting to let you know what was going on there. Uh, four and five are just changes to our revenues and appropriations, and that's our final update. Um, just a few small changes, uh, general fund increasing our revenue estimate. Um, we just continue to get additional revenue, so we needed to increase our estimate there. Um, updating our ESSER funding as well. Our ESSER two allocation decreased slightly. Um, it did that across the state, so just that small update. Um, and then lastly, our food service revenue increased as well, just again, based on that federal funding and that support that they're giving us. From the appropriation side, just a few small updates, again, to ESSER to account for that change in the ESSER two allocation, and then a slight increase to general fund. Again, that's more providing a buffer should any last minute invoices come here these last two weeks. So no big changes um, from what we talked about a couple months ago. And then for fiscal year 22, you will see temporary appropriations. Uh, we have to have those in place uh, in July in order to be able to spend money. Um, I try to estimate these as close to what I believe they are going to be. That way come the fall, we're not making a ton of changes. So. Um, again, with the federal funding, it's a moving target at, the, at this point, so we will likely see some changes there as well. Um, and then lastly, number seven there, and this was recommended to us by our auditors, it's just getting approval from the board to use ESSER two funds to pay for some instructional salaries and benefits um, from this fiscal year and next fiscal year. As we work through that federal process with these ESSER dollars, um, we're trying to dot every I and cross every T. And this was just a recommendation that we do have board approval to, to move from some staff from general fund into the assessor fund. So that is items one through seven. Thanks, Amanda. Comments or questions? If not, just make the motion to approve. Treasurer's report one to seven. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Mr. Mullet? Yes. Mr. Gertz? Yes. Mr. Kyle Miller? Yes. Mr. Steve Miller? Yes. And Mrs. Clink? Yes. Okay. All right. And then the last thing we have there, separate motion here. Um, and I believe I explained this to you that this has to be a separate motion as we do require three three affirmative votes. And this is just to be able to begin the process to put our permanent improvement levy on the November 2nd ballot, um, working with the attorney on this one. So again, this is just the initial resolution of necessity um, that we can get this process started for our PI renewal this fall. Okay. 
push on your comment. Not just give you that motion to approve. I'll make that motion. We'll second. Mm -hmm. Mr. Steve Miller? Yes. Mr. Gert? Yes. Mr. Kyle Miller? Yes. Mr. Hollett? Yes. And Mrs. Clint? Yep. All right. For uh, new business here, uh, we'll be asking you to take one through eight. Um, several uh, annual ones there. Number one there is just our, we waive our requirement uh, for a career tech education for seventh grade at Highland. Um, number two is our annual improvement of students for the college credit plus program for next school year. Um, three is just a language update in the administrative handbook. Uh, four and five are all our building handbooks for the for next school year. Uh, no major changes uh, in, in, in those handbooks. Uh, six is our agreement uh, with um, for the release time uh, Christian education program for next school year. Uh, number seven, we're excited about um, extending and expanding our partnership with the Village Network next school year to provide um, counseling services for our elementary students in all our buildings next school year. We're, we're looking forward to uh, building on our already established relationship there. And then number uh, eight was from the addendum is approving a resolution, um, uh, approving an addendum to our engagement letter participating in the Purdue Pharma uh, lawsuit with, uh, with our attorney group. Okay. Questions or comments? <clears throat> Uh, just need a motion to approve the new business and all of the commentary base. I'll make that move. Second. Amanda. Mr. Gertz. Yes. Mr. Mollett. Yes. Mr. Kyle Miller. Yes. Mr. Steve Miller. Yes. And Mrs. Clint. Yes. All right. For personnel, um, taking one through seven. Um, this is kind of personnel season here as we uh, finish up staffing and um, for next school year. But number one there, we have three resignations uh, to take. Uh, the third one there was added in the addendum, Lacey Troyer, who's resigning to take a, another position. And then uh, summer workers, uh, a correction to Jonas Yoder's uh, contract for next school year and this school year. Uh, number four are five new teachers for next school year. A um, couple uh, general teachers um, at Highland and Walnut Creek, Winesburg, and then a couple title teachers. And then the fifth one added was Rachel Snyder, an intervention specialist at Berlin next school year. Uh, five and six are some classified positions, a couple finishing out the year this year, and then uh, uh, filling some roles for next school year. And then number seven is a long list of supplementals uh, both athletic and non-athletic positions for, for next school year there on number seven. Questions or comments? Not just me, the motion to approve personal items one through seven. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Amanda? Mr. Steve Miller? Yes. Mr. Mollett? Yes. Mr. Gertz? Yes. Mr. Kyle Miller? Yes. Mrs. Clink? Yes. All right, and then we'll do two additional personnel ones here, kind of back to back um, separately. Uh, first, there is just Chris Gertz as JV soccer coach, girls soccer coach. I'll make a motion. Mr. Mollett? Yes. Mr. Steve Miller? Yes. Mr. Gertz? Mr. Kyle Miller? Yes. Mrs. Clink? Yes. And then the next one there is Brant Clink to serve as a volunteer assistant voice soccer coach. Motion to approve. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Mr. Steve Miller? Yes. Mr. Mullet? Yes. Mr. Gertz? Yes. Mr. Kyle Miller? Yes. Mrs. Clink? Okay, the superintendent recommends that the Board of Education go into executive session for any of the following matters. Uh, appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee. 
Mr. Kyle Miller. Yes. Mr. Mullet. Yes. Mr. Gert. Yes. Mr. Steve Miller. Yes. And Mrs. Clink. Yes. All right. Thanks, everybody. And just a reminder: uh, at this point, next month, at July, we will be back in person uh, for our for our July meeting. Um, pending any uh, changes um, in Columbus. So we look forward to seeing everybody in person in July. Thanks everybody, have a great Tuesday. Thank you everybody for getting us uh, collectively through a crazy year. Have a good summer. Thank <laughs> you.